let's begin our day with the morning hymn. history utterance and false judgment from indecision of mind and infirmity of will, care of criticism and love of praise, from the desire to be liked rather than respected, to be popular rather than to be just and to be guided by what is convenient rather than what is right. Amen. Boys and girls and master and colleagues, we are here for a very, very special place and we all know that in 1990, February 11th, the foundation, the laying stone, the whole ceremony happened here. That means everything started from this place. And before I go into detail, because this is school is, in my opinion, the way people say it, leap of hope in Northeast. When everything was going down and people have no hope, insurgency, all kind of disturbance, and the school came. Think about it, the people, where we are, the nearby areas, and you'll think that this school can only be built by one virtue and one, that emotion, that's what's called passion. If you don't have passion, you are not going to build this place. We owe it to our founders, Mr. D.M. Khetan, Ms. Julia Major. And this is how, because many of you, you may not be aware that you now Williamson is a company and Majors, they are two separate companies, then later on, Williamson, now Major merged with Williamson. And Mr. D.M. Khetan represented Williamson and Julia Major and her husband, Mr. Richard Major. Think about this place, think about those individuals. Because whatever they thought at that time was nothing but out of passion. If you're not passionate, you won't build it such a structure. Do some of the unbelievable things oh. in life and why. There's a very famous book called Unposted Letters. If you ever get a time, read it. And I'm reading something from this. Japan decided to venture into manufacturing steel in early 1960s. The two fundamental raw materials required for manufacturing steel are iron ore and coal, neither of which was available in Japan. More or less like us. It is started in this tea garden, nothing was there. But Japan knew that it could import these raw materials from 
and where they were available in abundance, and it also knew where to export this finished steel. Where the demand was great, the result, by the late 1960s, Japan became the largest exporter of steel in the world. In less than a decade, an industrial revolution happened. How? This is the big question. How this thing happened? Without iron ore and coal, Japan was able to become the largest exporter of steel in the 1960s. With nothing, Japan produced something. That we have got to believe that with something, everything can be achieved. Somewhere in your life, in my life, in our life, some resources are either being wasted or being inefficiently managed. Find out what it is and improve upon it. Of course, your most precious resource is yourself. And are you using yourself enough? That's the big question. Are you using yourself enough? And how to figure it out that am I using myself enough or not? To help you, I think school has a core vision and has four core values. If you can benchmark yourself against these four values and the vision of the school, I think you'll be able to figure it out that are you using yourself enough or not. So let me read out the vision for you. The vision goes to create citizens beyond boundaries by building strength of character and preparedness for life, believing that education is the best adventure in child's life. The word adventure is very interesting. Adventure means exploration. Are you exploring on a daily basis? Are you trying to do something new? Or you are very much comfortable in your own zone, where you are sitting, having three meals or five meals a day, just chilling out? Or you are pushing yourself a little too much? Or are you just, just going, going little every day, little bit of push, which is required in life? My request to each one of you, think about it. Think about it, it will help you to become a better version of yourself on a daily basis. And the four core values which you can benchmark your behavior on a daily basis are respect, resilience, integrity, and pursuit of excellence. If you can do this, trust me, you will be able to use yourself enough. And that's how life is all about. So I think on this founders, my urge and my request to each one of you, start rather than looking outward, Start looking inward. Just think about yourself, your behavior, your choices, how you, how you are going to use yourself on a daily basis. That you are precious to yourself, to your family, to everyone around you, to us. Look after yourself and as I just said, think about it. Are you using yourself enough? And I leave you with Kurt Hans words, there's more in you than you think. Remember, there is more in you than you think. People think that, you know, when you've been exposed to something, that's ability, that's talent, that's not. It's just exposure. That some of you may be exposed to certain things in a school, you think that's ability. No, that's talent. No, it's just an exposure. And that's why, explore. And my core word I'll say on this founder, I'll say explore, explore, and explore. Thank you very much. May I request? Uh, head girl, come and speak to you. Where is home? Where do we belong? Someone very rightly said, home is where the heart is. So without even thinking twice, I would say, the yes, Assam Valley School, my home. We think it's natural to feel a sense of belonging. But we don't realize that everything in life has to be learned. Belonging is an ability in which we must grow and adapt while staying true to ourselves. There was a point in my life when even I was afraid. I was afraid of being judged, being looked down upon, not being good enough. I was afraid that I had just found something I loved, but the criticism of others would make me want to quit. I was afraid I didn't belong. And that's when I realized that belonging isn't natural. You don't just naturally belong with a group of people or in a certain place. You belong where you choose to belong. And it's tough because belonging takes effort. More often than not, 
you don't realize where you belong and that is because you try to force it but the sense of belonging isn't something that can be forced it's something that comes inherently over time and it's definitely a two way street one has to put some amount of effort into interacting mixing and blending with fellow peers belonging is not about finding the person finding the person to sit next to in a class or finding the perfect roommates it's about rejoicing when the house wins and planning to come back stronger when your house loses it's about cheering at the top of the lungs in inter school events not caring whether evs is winning or losing but caring about whether evs can be heard and that itself is our victory there are a lot of people who don't feel like they belong even at their own homes but all i want is for you all is to feel that evs is your home not because you're supposed to feel that way but because this is where you belong thank you now i would like to hand it over to the head boy Good morning, everyone. Honestly, I reached a state of strain to write this speech for the past few days. Uh, the headmaster had asked me to make a speech on the sense of pride, and as easy as it seemed, that definitely was not the case. But then, attending yesterday's awards assembly honestly made me feel emotions which I hadn't felt in what seems like ages. And I realized that the answer was quite simple. We all complexify what pride is and what a sense of what having a sense of pride means. It's not some big philosophical knot meant to be untangled only by the greatest minds, but rather something so simple that we overlook it on a daily basis. It is something which is probably as misunderstood as teenagers, and the common notion is that having pride is a negative feature and one should instead be humble. But the essence here is striking a balance between these two seemingly conflicting ideas to sort of create a balance like yin and yang. Being proud means to have honor, self-respect, and hold high value of things close to your heart. And yesterday, seeing my friends getting various awards, seeing the joy on the faces of the captains going up on stage to receive the trophies, amongst a lot of other small things that make this school function as one whole, I couldn't help but feel immensely proud and happy of how far we have come despite the circumstances, and how far we are capable of going and setting a clear standard of what and how an aviator should be. And it is this sense of pride in school that drives me to wake up each morning and be a better version of myself, just as it drives every aviator to do the same. It is with this sense of pride that we are assembled here today at the Foundation Stone, celebrating our 26th founders. The only difference is that some of us are yet to realize it. Some of us are yet to realize that the school and what it stands for is a lot bigger than any one of us. It's an entire pillar supporting the educational structure in the Northeast, and its future lies in our hands. The fact that we get to be a part of this great institution and its history is an honor that many of us are yet to realize. I think every aviator should carry this dawn of realization that they are an important part of this institution's present, present and future with pride, and know that each and every aviator matters to the school. Be proud of, be proud of your school, of yourself, and what you stand for, and carry yourself likewise. Thank you, and God bless. I will hand you over to the headmaster. Thank you very much, Arik and Soumya, to talk about some of the very important and fine points of life, the sense of belonging and the sense of pride. And there are small ways you can develop these things. You know, your boarding houses, they are not just buildings. They are not just living arrangements. Little more than that. Respect. Respect your boarding house, respect every place, all the structure in this school. that they are not just buildings because then after years you will come back as an adult with your family with your kids with your spouses trust me every corner of this school will remind you of your child and that is very important that you protect you preserve because there are so many others who have passed off from this school and their memories are settled somewhere in the corner of the school but if you don't look after this place then then they will come they will find a different school and trust me this school we don't want to create a different school 
You go on, and this is how you create, you build legacy school. For years and years and years, names change, but schools remain the same. The essence remains the same. Same thing. What you are wearing is not just any other dress. It's called uniform. Respect it. The blazer, the ties, the belt, the shoes, the pant. Everything needs to be respected. That's why it's not in fashion statement that let me change my pant size, let me change it to you no know, kind of different kind of thing. This is not fashion statement. This is uniform. And once you start realizing this, you will start respecting this place and automatically you will have sense of pride. And to build this sense of pride, I forgot to announce yesterday one very important announcement. Uh, because you know, we have decided as an adult community that as and when, uh, every year whenever we will announce the Arbimega Trophy winner's name and that particular house, then the benches in the main field and the Likla garden will be painted in that color. So this year, the benches, all the benches in the main field area and the Likla garden area will be painted in red color. Because the Jinari Manas house won the Arvi Megan. And I want you to take that sense of pride in that. Because that, that's so, so, so important. So well done to Jinari Manas for their win, for their persistence. Congratulations. And let me end this assembly with a beautiful line. Maybe these lines can inspire you. There's no saturation in life. Only saturated minds. There is no stagnation in life. Only stagnant people. Life is mere open parenthesis. Fill as much as you want. There is no closed parenthesis. There is as much room as your heart can conceive. As much room as your mind can believe. And as much room as your attitude towards life. Wish you happy founders. Look after yourself and enjoy the rest of the events. Thank you.